Okay, we'll start. Thank you, Amrita. Um, so continue on the discussion just before we broke the class. Uh, let me start from there. So the question was, let me, at least I got confused a little bit. So what is happening here? Okay, we just to uh, recap on what we were talking about. So as the, even the reference link that I have mentioned here um, talks about underscore, double underscore and underscore, how they are treated within Python. Now, this single underscore is not, it's hidden, but it's not as, as much as the double underscore. You can still access this variable. Only thing is anything with underscore uh, followed by underscore. But when we import it, it doesn't import those attributes which are uh, having a single attribute, uh, sorry, single underscore. And it allows you to access the variable attributes which are having the names as single attribute, uh, single underscore also. Whereas if you have attributes with a double underscore, they are completely hidden because name mangling happens here. Okay. Whereas Python does not do name mangling with the variables which are with a single underscore. Um, whereas it does it with a double underscore. The name, name mangling, which I mentioned it, it does it with a single underscore class name followed by double underscore and our hidden variable, whatever attribute is what is given as a, a mangled name inside. So if you, you can access it using the mangled name, but you will not be allowed to access it using the uh, double underscore name that you have given it as an attribute. Now, what we have done here, I have um, trying to access this underscore temperature for the first time. I'm creating this attribute and it is getting some new value. And then when I saw the dictionary, we saw that it gets added. Okay. This is getting added underscore temperature with the value. And then suppose if I add another attribute C dot temp, which is not there inside the dictionary. So what happens is when we give an attribute with respect to an object, it looks for the presence of that in the dictionary and it doesn't find it is getting added to that attribute. Okay. That uh, to the dictionary and you have a value um, given there. Now let me look at this. Okay. This I have given explain. Now let us add this to, let me explain what I have wanted to explain it. Then before we, we go ahead with the remaining thing. Now there are two functions set attribute and get attribute. Okay. Which can also be used if you want to add like what we did here, we can add new attributes. This is the attribute name, label and the value. Okay. It's like a dictionary entry. We are adding a, a dictionary entry to the attributes of the object. We can pass an attribute, uh, the function first, first parameter as an object. And then we are adding a new attribute. This is the value. Maybe I will say new attrib val one. Okay. Maybe to differentiate it. Um, and okay. This is the name of the attribute. And now, you can set the attribute using this. Then if you look at the dictionary, you will get that listed. And then you can also get that attribute using get attribute and you can give the key. It's like a dictionary search, nothing but um, the local objects dictionary is getting searched, either uh, adding a new element to the dictionary or uh, getting the value which is already there. So we are uh, when you are doing a get attribute, we are actually searching through the dictionary of that object of the attribute object and then it will default will go to the class attribute also if it doesn't find it in the object attribute that is a default behavior when it is looking for an attribute then if it doesn't find anywhere then it will give an error if it finds in one of them you will get it so these two are the other way new other methods of accessing the attributes okay that's uh, i want to tell you that now 
let us continue with our discussion and if you want to actually read more about it uh, i am sure you know better sources than me uh, but i found this is interesting uh, maybe uh, you can read more about it like you can uh, use the underscore for a variable in a for loop or if you have an attribute or a name followed by an attribute uh, sorry underscore then you are you can actually over uh, write any of the keywords of the python there are many uh, many small things which are uh, there hidden uh, like uh, using of a single underscore or double underscore uh, this this link maybe give you some which if you want to uh, learn more about it fine now let us continue with our discussion on um, property okay now what i am doing c2 the same object which we have created and calling the setter temperature which is a normal method okay if you look at this these are all not a different method this though i am calling it as a getter uh, method and setter method they are like any other method of a class and we can access it using a normal thing now if i pass a very value which is outside the limit uh, is nothing very complex uh, you get the value is um, with, not within the limit actually the exception is getting created uh, value error object which is a, a exception type and then you see that the value which is not within the limit is getting generated so that is because of having a arise exception here with a message so it uh, oh, sorry so it gets generated that's what i want to just uh, show you when you call this method how the exception gets generated fine now let us try to understand how we can create using a property class okay that's uh, that's our focus of this uh, lecture so now what is the problem with whatever we followed see what did we do initially we had a class without any of those getter and setter method we were accessing it directly then i brought in get temperature set temperature now the problem with this approach is if i add into my class a new getter or setter method if already the code has been developed using this class and they have been accessing those temperature variable directly now if i make a change to this like this even if i try to hide it or if i try to add some uh, new uh, getter and setter methods every part of the code wherever it was used directly has to be changed because no longer that uh, object dot temperature would work because it has been hidden now and i need to use the get temperature or set temperature method so there is a whole lot of changes that we need to do to the existing code to make your changes effective or it's not backward compatible okay whatever um, changes you are making to the class is affecting the implementation using that class so we are trying to find a method by which we can avoid that and you can still make some changes to the class without impacting the changes to the existing code code base whatever has been using that object so let us look at that implementation now i am going to take this and i will explain you this code because uh, it's a long a uh, huge num okay now what i am doing same celsius class in it with i'm just printing for everything to say that when it is getting invoked and then we have i'm calling the self set temperature instead of calling it directly or setting it here now what is the uh, difference between calling this and setting it here it doesn't matter it's only a, a discipline that we are following otherwise this temperature will get uh, initialized here and then when you are changing it it will get anyway you are using the same uh, variable so it is going to be initialized later on now let me come here we are going to use the property now what is this this is a as i mentioned in the slide property is a class and i am creating an object of this property type and returning that object which is of type property so this temperature is actually an object of type property it's a class which is built in class 
which accepts some set of parameters. Now we'll bother about only two parameters. Function objects, one is to getter and the other one is for setter. Get function and the set function. Now, since this is defined within the class, these function objects are should have been defined within the class. So we have we have those functions defined, and both of them are methods which are accepting the object inside, and then set temperature of course will take a value also as a parameter. Now, when you do this, what happens is these objects function objects are pass to this and then now your variable whatever was there is now you can call it using this the name is now only temperature now let us see how it works first before i go into the detail and then we will talk about how to create it using the decorator now I have added the print on all of them so that you know when it is going to be accessed. Uh, this is a description. Now simply put property attaches some code. Okay, we are actually adding some code get temperature and set temperature to the member attribute accesses to the member attribute accesses, which is set temperature. That is the attribute name now. Okay, this is going to be our name of the attribute going forward, not the double underscore attribute. And we are not going to be calling the set attribute temperature or get at temperature any longer. Now, how is it going to work? Let us first try to see that. Now, having added this line, like creating a property object and temperature is a class attribute. Now, what is this actually? Okay, let us try to understand this temperature itself. Temperature is part of the Celsius class and it becomes a class attribute of Celsius. Okay, so it is common across the class. It doesn't have as any object association there. So it is becoming a part of the class attribute. Now, what is the type of this temperature? So as I mentioned, this temperature is becoming a class attribute. So we'll have Celsius dot temperature is the way to access this class attribute and type of that will be we will see what it is and then let me print the temperature itself okay now you see here this is some object name okay uh, where exactly this object is the property object and what is the type class its property class property so now let us print the uh, dictionary of this class to see whether this attribute is added I did not do that earlier. Mm, where is it? Property object. Okay, it is already added. Okay, it is a uh, big. Uh, I think it is listing. Uh, okay, where is it listing? Let us uh, let us put one print so that we know where exactly it is starting. Okay, from here. Now, inside that, you can see that our temperature, which is a type, and then it's a dictionary, of course, it's a type property object, which is nothing but whatever you got printed, the same thing is getting printed. So, we have a dictionary with the name temperature, which is referring to a property object. So, under the class attribute, level class level so we are accessing it at the class level this dictionary so it is proven that it is a class attribute now okay now what is it that we are going to do now using this okay let us see that okay i think i have printed it here so okay no need of this now i already printed so let us try to create an object and access it one by one okay maybe i will write it one by one okay, no problem i hope so far you are with me now let us use the updated code whatever the new uh, property object we have created and i am creating the object now now let us follow through what will happen when we do this 
and then we look at the printout okay um, i'll clear all of them and then i'll put one print here so that we get a break in between okay now when i create an object now is it it is going to call the init of course and 50 is going to be passed then this is going to be printed then it is going to call this set temperature okay now this set temperature is anyway is going to call directly not using the property okay um, and then it is going to print this okay maybe i okay it is let it be there um, i am printing the id of the temperature underscore temperature uh, to just to show you that whatever uh, I, th I think it is not needed uh, it's okay okay i will tell you why i am printing it to just show you that the duplicate the sorry mangled name is same as this uh, i'm trying to print the id of that to show that it is but anyway we have seen the dictionary so there is no need for it and and there and it is going to set the value okay with the 50 okay now now that is what is going to happen here okay uh, i should print it before Okay, now let us see what is happening. Now, okay, there is too many printouts are there. Okay, create C3 now. In it is called setting value. Now setting value anyway is going to be called because I'm calling it directly. There is no uh, uh, surprises there. Okay. And then it is another gap is there. Okay, that print is there. And then object values. Now I am trying to print the temperature now. I am accessing the temperature now. Now I am calling it as a temperature because I have already created a property object with a temperature name. So when i do this i am using it for getting the value i'm not setting it i'm using a i'm trying to get the value of this attribute temperature which is nothing but a property object so when i do this c3 dot temperature it is going to call this function get temperature because it has been already uh, told that you need to call this get method when i am trying to get a value of this attribute which is nothing but a property object but it is actually related to the whatever method that you are defined it as okay now in the temperature get temperature i am trying to get the value of this underscore temperature which is linked these two are linked okay internally by me and the code so when we do the c3 it is printing getting value getting value is this function get temperature so this function is getting called automatically when because of this particular line now this is getting called and then it is actually printing the id of the internally created object temperature double underscore temperature and then it is getting me the value of that so which is nothing but 50 now this is nothing but calling the function for this there is no need of this getter or setter method because property does not come into the play here this just are calling the function so there is no confusion here so i hope this is clear i am printing it a converted value but uh, actual value whatever has been uh, got is here now let us try to set it now i want to call the setter okay i have not added the code so let me write it now suppose i say c3 dot temperature equal to maybe 500 and then let us print that value now what is happening i am trying to again call the attribute here sorry this is a print message here c3 dot temperature so i am trying to oh, sorry here i am writing into it i am 
setting it with this value. Now this temperature is with respect to the object. It is again going to call because I already set the method which should be called for setting. So this set temperature is going to be called with this value what I have I have passed here. It's equivalent to a function overloading of uh, whatever we have seen. Uh, you know, if you overload the operator in C++, okay. Uh, so here we are actually associating the temperature with the two functions, two methods, one for setting and one for getting. So when we try to access the object with respect to now, that is with respect to object we are accessing it. Now what exactly happening? This temperature is a class attribute. It's not a object attribute. In the class attribute, this is a type property object. So when you try to do C3 dot temperature, the interpreter, Python interpreter will be searching through the dictionary of objects, which where it will not find this. And then it will go to the class level where it will find the object which is created temperature uh, class attribute. Since this is a property type property object, since we are trying to write into this, it is already set which method to be called. So it is getting resolved there and then it calls this method. So when you do this 500 gets set finally into this variable and then when you try to get it, you get the 500. Now you can also get the same thing uh, using the mangled name just to verify that they are all same. Um, let me call it with the mangled name underscore Celsius double underscore. It is not enough if I do there Celsius double underscore. Now that should also be 500. Now to be sure that the IDE of that is same as the ID of the variable that we saw. Let me print it and then show you. ID of this mangled name is same as the underscore name that we saw earlier. Okay. Now both ID I am printing. Now I am printing this ID. And then earlier I printed the ID of underscore underscore temperature which is 225 some 992 and this is also so that means this is what is mangled as this which is sure and we see that both objects are the same they are pointing to the same object it's a mangled name and we are setting it into that hidden name okay whatever is the underscore underscore temperature that's uh, it has been proven okay we just verified that it is is whatever we are saying is working okay so i hope this is clear now what if if i try to do this i am trying to pass a value which is outside the limit now what happens this i am again now i have done the property now so this temperature is going to call me the set temperature function only which is having the validation business here. We are not accessing it directly. If you are using it with temperature, we are not accessing it directly. We are using the setter method to access the temperature underscore underscore temperature. So it will go through the uh, normal path, which is supposed to be through this and then it will raise an error. So we will get a value temperature below this error we are getting value error we get. So what has happened using this way of representing we have actually hidden this methods from the user. We don't need to ask the user or whoever has written the code earlier using the just temperature will still work here. We are still using the same temperature, but internal implementation has changed the name of the temperature to underscore underscore temperature. And then we have added the get temperature and set temperature and added this line also. We only made sure that whatever was the value that we used as an object attribute, we have to keep it same as this, this uh, property at name. Once you make sure of this one, then the rest of the implementation that we do underneath becomes hidden from the uh, users who are using this op class earlier. So if you release this class implementation to the users, no code will break, but still you are bringing in all the restrictions and then if anyone was illegally accessing the temperature directly 
and setting the wrong value now it will be caught only, only the um, illegal use of or, or not illegal use but wrong way of using the attribute will be caught but other things will not be broken so um, this actually helps us in saving that that's uh, um, advantage of using the property object and doing it now um, any questions on this uh, from anyone i hope this is very clear okay i hope no doubts fine now let us go further let me take out i think this is uh, i already given uh, so i don't need to mangle the name this is not needed so let us call this okay now i think even this is also fine let me just take it and then i will try to understand we'll try to understand the property class okay this is what we are doing i am doing the same thing like creating the object with another value and accessing it so there is nothing um, complex about it um, no issues now let us try to understand the property class okay I'm trying to just explain you this. Let us do it outside property class. I'm creating an object of that property. Now we get the property type. Okay, type of prop one. Now let us implement one. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you. Only using the property class how we can use it in a different way earlier we used the property class by saying passing these two methods on creating the property object now can we do it in two stages or multiple stages okay now i have created a dummy class and there are no actually associated property or anything uh, any attribute or anything just just to understand this property class in little more detail how it is actually internally working okay now we have a uh, two methods like what we had gets setter method and getter method actually it is not doing anything okay get or set anything inside the class i am calling a property object and instantiating a property object now when we have a class definition like this what happens the interpreter goes through this and it doesn't do anything for this methods because unless it is called with respect to the object there is nothing to do but it executes these things which are part of the class because we are creating a class attribute when we have these kinds of things which are to be executed in the class so they go one by one now it is very important that we get the object which is getting created here and then use that object which has been created now we have created it without those default parameters which are supposed to be with the getter and setter methods now what happens if i do invoke that this is the getter which is a method defined in the property class wherein the object the function object that you pass is getting associated or getting assigned so you can see that this getter is the name a method name of this object okay which is accepting a a method which is to be called when i use it with the property object okay or when i am using this prop of this class it is going to call this method that like temperature i am using the prop here so this is I'm just showing you that how internally the property class is implemented using these methods, which is accepting this function objects and initializing them. So when you really invoke the object for either getting or setting of this, it is actually invoking internally these function objects passed to it. Okay. And it has to store it somewhere, which is actually getting stored here. Now, why are we returning this object and then passing it again? Because that is how you can keep adding to the existing object 
because these labels are actually new labels who are created as the interpreter goes through it if you don't follow the previous object name then the new name will be created that you might have seen the common mistake that we do so you need to use this label and then create a new label and then use this here and create a new label so it gets added to the previously created object a uh, couple of these methods are getting added now so you are doing it in two stages by using this now let us verify whether this is actually uh, will do the same job as what we have done earlier okay now let me just print this object i am creating the dummy class okay i am not printing anything i am just uh, creating the dummy object and then let us try to access one of the property which is nothing but prop this is the property because once you associate a property object that becomes a property and then whatever attribute you are trying to initialize it inside them they are getting protected by this property so understand that we can have multiple attributes associated with one property maybe uh, all the employee related or the company related all those properties can be grouped together and then you can create a different property objects and then associate those getter and setter methods separately and you can partition different attributes of the class with a particular property accessing those attributes so you can group them uh, maybe employee properties and then when a company properties or salary details or whatever then you can have multiple properties and then uh, there are different joining date and other information about the employee and then salary details or da or a bonus whatever a stock option those things can be captured for an employee so though it is part of the object different attributes can be grouped together to a particular property and then you can associate different attribute uh, sorry different function objects uh, which are setting it and getting it okay so you can get those attributes and set attributes and this is a better way of um, grouping them so i would like to maybe give a, uh, a problem or an assignment to use this property object and then associate different uh, getter and setter methods and group those attributes based on the particular type of uh, attributes so attributes can be grouped based on uh, some properties okay uh, maybe associated properties can be grouped together with a set of uh, setter and getter methods so maybe we can take it as an assignment i will define that assignment for the next class okay we can do that so now when we do prop dot we are also uh, we are assigning the value to the prop attribute which is going to call the setter object uh, method which is dummy setter and then it is going to print this dummy setter is called okay because we are setting it uh, dummy setter is called actually we are not setting any attribute here so it just i am trying to show that it is getting called that's all okay so you can also do it in two stages uh, like what we did earlier now get attribute we can see that which is getting now if you propose if you call it a dot prop we are actually accessing that attribute for getting the value which is property getter is getting called and what is returned is none okay there is nothing to uh, always a method always returns a none type if you don't not return do not return anything so you know so it is getting printed none type is getting printed so that's uh, that's what i wanted to show you how this property object itself is working internally okay now is this required that we need to use all this complicates complicated uh, definition instead of that let us use a decorator so decorator is nothing but using the same thing in a concise manner so let us understand the this is a very little complex way of uh, achieving what we want a simpler way of doing it is uh, using the decorator at property so instead of defining all these things we are going to simplify it with just a, a decorator at property which is internally actually calling this property object or creating the property object and the name it is going to associate with that is temperature okay so these are all remaining the same okay 
and I am using the self dot temperature here. I am not uh, using the getter or setter method. There is no getter setter method once you have a property. So you are going to use the property name, which is nothing but the temperature. And we are going to use it as a decorator here. So we use the same thing underscore underscore temperature, the hidden name, private uh, attribute. And we are going to set it here. Now what happens is this is becoming a, a setter method without giving a specific method name for it. Now earlier the difference was we were having a, a dummy setter and dummy getter and then we were creating this property using them. Now what has happened is we have removed that a specific methods being defined and then getting uh, hidden by using the property uh, object. Now we are using the decorator for it and this method is setting method is replaced with this and uh, sorry getting method is replaced with this getter is replaced with this and then setter is going to be this okay which is what you saw here okay so you now let me try to explain why we need this this should be followed by this okay when you create this property the the object property object temperature is getting created okay as the interpreter goes through this and after that you can say temperature dot setter now what are you doing similar to what we did here we are setting the function object for the setter method getter method should be done first and then only setter method okay that order has to be followed because you see here even when you are doing it in a single line this is first object parameter and then the next one so getter method is getting set first and then the setter method is getting set so same thing is getting followed even if you are doing it in two stages or three stages here or you are doing it using the decorator so the first getter method is getting initialized now this function object which is an in, you know a inner object which is getting created as you know what happens in a normal uh, decorator and the new object is getting passed. So you are creating a temporary, uh, sorry, temperature property object here and the getter method is already set in that, okay? So maybe we can do one more thing. When I do this, getter method is already set. How do you uh, know that? Maybe we can print it here. Okay, temperature is a class attribute. So print um, our class attribute is Celsius. I'm just trying to do that. Dot temperature temperature. Uh, sorry, class attribute dictionary. We have to see that dictionary, right? No, no, no. We need to use the temperature. I want to do the what I want to do. Uh, okay, dictionary. I will print it. Dictionary. Okay, and now let us see what happens. When I call this, we will know. Okay, let it be there. Now, let me create the object of that type. Now it is getting invoked though interpreter has see always the interpreter doesn't run these methods as only when it is called it is getting called but it has already gone through that and created those temperature object uh, the property object and everything is available. Now when you run it now what is the sequence 100 is getting initialized so init is getting called so let me I'm going to create C5 okay we have to call from here init is getting called and then what is getting invoked 
you need to set this value and it is printing this celsius dictionary okay that object is getting created and then you get this getting printed that dictionary is getting printed of the class attribute and you can see whatever methods we have added it will be here temperature okay this this object which is a function object and then uh, yeah that is two Fahrenheit method is there so this dictionaries are there in the attribute temperature is also there which is a property object created and it's you have to print that dictionary to find out what is the uh, values stored there then it calls setting value okay because you are setting this 100 it is invoked setter is called so setting value is here this value which is getting called so the reason why this is getting printed is because you are trying to set the value of this value so on creation this is going to be called but on creating the object you need to do it in the reverse way first get value and then set value then when you are actually invoking it you will be setting it and then getting the value so this is if you recall the multiple decorators were to be go asked in this sequence right we have we have already seen that boxes with a different wrapper so we are getting this getting uh, this value is, is getting setting value is getting called and then end of in it i am just calling it here that when you are doing doing the assignment it is calling that function setting value and then end of unit is happening so that's uh, this method is getting called and then you get both of them printed okay that's a sequence in which it is happening okay now let us uh, let me print this okay this is a very trivial thing calling the method is a trivial thing but maybe i will call this you know what will happen it is going to call this temperature setter okay oh, sorry getter here it's, it's accessing the value of this so it is going to call this getter and then uh, getting value will be printed okay that's uh, very obvious getting value is printed and then you are converting the method that's a uh, default thing okay uh, Okay, do you want a break or shall we continue? Maybe I may take another, or not more than half an hour. We can finish it early or if you want a break, we can come back, whatever you want. Oof. No answers. Okay, so we'll continue because we can finish it early okay okay any questions so far um, i don't know maybe i don't need to go to in detail i think but uh, i am not sure maybe i will ask you guys is it okay whatever i am doing or do you think that it's not needed or you can feel free that let me stop the presenting uh, Okay, let me take a small sample. Uh, one second. Okay, my question is, uh, okay, before I ask a poll, I should ask you what is the question actually. Um, whether going this kind of uh, you know, details of how it is getting called internally and then how property object is getting created. Um, is it making sense or do you think it's a waste of time so maybe the first question is is it okay to explain uh, if you think that so it's fine uh, explaining this is good uh, please raise your hands so that i will know whether i am uh, boring you guys or uh, giving you some details which you are already aware or i'm not sure okay uh, i thought it will be useful um, can you tell me whether it is property explaining about the property object is useful or not okay simple in simple question okay 
uh, I'm not sure whether you are already aware of it or not, but still, even if you are aware, no problem. Uh, some of you may be, uh, but uh, this class is for everyone. So actually, I will tell you why I am doing it. Uh, it's only a curiosity from my side. Okay. Uh, I want to know how actually Python is implementing internally. And then uh, I want to do, you know, let us see because uh, when you read the documentation, they tell you just use the decorator and then you know it works. Um, but I wanted to know how the property object is getting created. Is it a class attribute or where is it maintained? And then how getter and setter methods are getting called. So I I wanted to uh, give you a flavor of that, uh, and I wanted to understand myself also, and then share it with you also. Okay. Um, um, it is good to know how exactly what is happening underneath. Thanks for uh, uh, your feedback. Uh, okay, let me go back. I hope it is useful. So that's my concern. Okay. Okay, thank you. So let me start off. Uh, now, where are we? I forget where I am. Okay, let me see the class. Okay, we have now understood what, uh, let me summarize it, what we have done so far. We try to understand what is this property decorator does internally. And then when we give a name to the property, what exactly is happening and which uh, this uh, we know that property object with a name temperature is getting created and then it is also getting initialized with this method. Okay. Um, which is actually the name is same. Okay. Uh, this method name and the attribute names are same, property names are same, but it sets this method for getter, okay, G E T T E R of this particular property object. And then when you use that object name and then setter, it is now initializing this ob function object. Again, you are calling it as the same name. Please remember, we are giving the same name. We are not giving, okay, I have not highlighted it actually, sorry. Uh, we are not using different names for this uh, names. When you are using property, we need to use the same temperature. But how does it know whether it, which is a getter and setter? Because you know you are calling it as a setter here, dot setter uh, in the decorator and then you are passing a value. So this is for setting the attribute. And then if you just saw self and then you are creating it, you are it's a getter attribute uh, method. And then you are always it is uh, useful better to use a hidden name here, you no know, uh, private uh, attribute. Maybe I call it as a semi-private and private two names. A single underscore is a semi-private variable attribute and double underscore is a uh, private attribute. So it's always good once you decide to have a attribute property, if you want to use it and you are defining them like this, better to use the private attribute name inside of it so that you are really protecting it okay unless people know how to access it using the class name and the name of the attribute they will not be able to by actually it is not to actually prevent you from uh, accessing it it is only preventing you from accessing it uh, by accident and modifying it okay it's uh, actually um, python believes in you know uh, people who code or you know with a good intent and then they are by mistake they should not tamper with the variables inside them. So they give a private attribute and then use the getter and setter so that you properly call it. So this is how it is getting invoked. Uh, this is how the uh, object is getting created and how methods are getting initialized. And when you call it, you don't need to actually call those methods because we are not even given the method name. It's like a Lambda. Uh, similar to Lambda is a, um, um, object without a name okay um, but that is they are getting initialized with a getter and setter and we call it using this okay so when you call this temperature we are actually calling the getter method when you are assigning it maybe i will assign it here c5 i think i already defined it so anyway temperature equal to maybe thousand so here a setter will get called so that's all okay we we don't need to worry about which method it is uh, and when you get a value it is getting and you know that setter has been called setting value when you invoke this so it's very neat way of doing it okay that's the beauty of 
uh, having this um, property decorator okay now i am going to give you i am not mentioned about the delete attribute okay so let me talk about delete attribute okay um, what is the use of that suppose you have uh, data sciences you are creating so many uh, object attributes with uh, maybe a huge file which is captured in an object you may have to release once in a while those attributes once you use it up and then extract the information from there so delete attribute helps you really to make sure that it doesn't hog your object with so many attributes with a huge files or arrays um, being in the memory might actually load the system so you want to once in a while delete them and release those objects back okay so you actually actually when you stop using it it will garbage collector will use it uh, it will uh, gain it back take it back but delete attribute is forcibly calling it to get deleted and you uh, you, you don't wait for the garbage collector to come see the problem with garbage collector is when it comes up and your data to be cleaned up cleaned up is a huge uh, array or huge uh, file it is going to take more time but if you are releasing it it's like uh, you all of you had uh, seen that the uh, in you know, our country had um, faced a lot of floods now in this year and uh, decide the people decide to open up the dams uh, when it's appropriate and warn the people who are living nearby the rivers and then uh, evacuate them if required and then release this so when you release those uh, not during the emergency when you do it uh, stage by stage uh, damages are less right so similarly even if you are deleting the attributes consciously whenever you are having some time to do that or when you are aware that this uh, attributes are no longer needed if you release them consciously it is going to create much of impact to the performance as well as you are aware that it's going to take up some time when you are releasing the object because it's a huge object is getting released and uh, consciously doing it is better than uh, unco you know, uh, when you were not even aware that when the garbage collector is going to come and then clean it up so that is going to be like overflowing of dam and then you know uh, damaging not only the people living nearby but even so many people around the dams so this delete attribute is like releasing the thing consciously when you are safe when you think it is safe to release it so let us now understand that delete attribute what is supported by uh, python we have a function like set attribute and uh, get attribute and b uh, ib is not there attr only because very concise naming so don't uh, think that it is attrib is there but i normally feel that uh, rib will make us understand attrib better but anyway uh, functions are all attr only so when you want to delete you can delete the attribute of either class type class attribute or object attribute so based on what you pass as a first parameter and the name of the attribute that you pass as a second parameter that is going to get deleted now because i am passing c5 which is an object type whatever i pass here should be a object attribute now what am i doing actually i am deleting the mangled name of the temperature which was not even created by me it was created by the property uh, decorator by calling the set uh, setter while that it was created okay uh, when the setter was called with underscore underscore temperature this uh, mangled name was there and it has created that object now sorry attribute object attribute now i am deleting it directly using that name within the delete attribute now will it be accepted it is accepted because the dictionary of the object will have this name anyway which is the mangled name so doesn't matter delete attribute is very friendly it deletes that thing now what has happened the object attribute which is as far as the user is concerned is underscore underscore temperature but as far as the implementation is concerned it is a underscore celsius underscore underscore temperature that attribute is gone now i am trying to 
if they don't do any of these things i'm just trying to do all this to just uh, explain it when i was exploring it i thought i will share it with you uh, you can also do it uh, if you are not done earlier you can you can start exploring it now what i am doing i want to access the temperature i am not i don't even know whether i have deleted it or not i am trying to now what am i doing i am trying to get the value of temperature now this guy is going to call the temperature property get value okay getter is going to be called now getter is going to call this is going to access this variable which is a mangled name of what i have deleted we verified it that the id of that are same so it is the same name which is referring to but the code says this but actually it is accessing something else you can you know you know that how the compiler or the interpreter is modifying your existing python code to something else similar thing happens in c also when you are op when the optimization is on what you have written as a function is not what is getting executed actually okay uh, it will be something actually for loop you would have put but uh, the optimizer would have unrolled the for loop unrolling of you know loop happens loop unroll for optimization purpose and the for loop itself would have been removed and it will be executing something else but we are thinking from our perspective that code is getting executed similarly here what we are thinking is this is what is getting accessed but actually internally the code has been modified to access the mangled name of the attribute which has been deleted now so when i do this that attribute is no longer there in the object dictionary okay we can in fact we can verify it uh, before even calling it uh, print c file dictionary okay so um, where is fine you have nothing okay the dictionary is empty uh, that is because there is only one attribute which was there in the object which is also got deleted so you have an empty dictionary and then naturally this fellow will go further down up okay uh, to look for that in the class attribute also with the same name if it has uh, you have um, overridden the attribute then it might ac access the class attribute with the same name if it is there mangled name okay now it is no longer there so it is going to give an error when you try to access it okay so uh, let me take it further okay that i think you are you understand that get attribute is actually removing the object itself from the dictionary so it is removing that attribute itself sorry not object it removes the attribute itself from the dictionary now but anyway c4 okay it is specific to the object so that's why i wanted to say um, it is uh, nothing to do with the other object c4 temperature is well and safe it is hale and healthy only the c5 local object dictionary is gone okay so i am sure you are aware of it now what happens if i have a class attribute so let me try to now i am going to do some major damage to the implementation itself uh, please uh, pay attention to it what i am trying to do i am deleting the class attribute which is temperature now here what has happened c5 dot temperature temperature exists okay temperature uh, when i access this temperature property object exist under the class level and it is trying to use the uh, getter method and then it goes to getter method also exist and then it goes inside the getter method and then when it was accessing the underscore underscore temperature only the error came okay now i am now killing the class attribute itself which is created locally as a class uh, attribute when you did this it has created a class attribute with the property object okay i am now deleting the property object itself delete attribute celsius temperature now if i do this it exists still even though one the object attribute only gone now class attribute is also gone okay now the problem is 
what if we try to use now i am trying to create an object now after deleting the property object which is nothing but temperature which is a class attribute okay it was not directly created it was created because of our um, decorator okay this temperature was created as a class property object during the creation now if i do this what happens let us see now this is a new object i am creating okay this is not the same object so is not going to have that problem c new is created init is called end of init it is all the okay okay um, now let me try to call this okay let me explain it um what i am trying to do here is independent of what i did there okay i am creating a new celsius and then temperature object is still now what has happened now uh, let me try to uh, explain you uh, this was very um, revealing now i deleted that in the celsius implementation whatever was you no know, class attribute was there now i am creating a 160 i am passing some value a new object it did not give me any error okay it did not give me any error now it was surprising that i deleted the temperature which was a property object but when i call this it was not giving any error now what is that is happening let us follow through that now it came here in it in it was called and then self dot temperature now what has happened this temperature is now a new object integer object which is getting created because it is not there in the dictionary this name clashing with this name so right now what is happening is this value whatever i pass is initialized here because i have this okay if i don't have it we'll have a different problem so when i do that and then c dot new temperature and i type it i get integer type and then when i access it i get 160. now what has happened is it has actually created the temporary this object as a temporary object which is not overridden now okay um, because of that temperature okay which is in the init function and you get this method which is called int okay so you don't get any runtime error because of that now let me try to explain one more thing before i go to some other file now what if if i do this c new underscore temperature okay i should write it as double underscore okay now in this object c new object i am trying to access this which is a hidden name which is a error now because we have removed the temperature uh, attribute which was there in the class itself and we are having this is no longer valid now okay it has not gone to the temperature uh, um, method setter method to create that new this value whatever was there so you get a method error saying that it is no longer valid okay so that's uh, i wanted to explain it, this okay any questions or any clarifications or any add anything you want to add based on what i am saying anyone so in the above code prop setter line be used before prop setter i saw some comments about that code okay uh, let me what is that prop setter line be used before prop getter okay let me see that what you are saying if i don't uh, understand please come online and explain me okay 
whether can we use it in the other way okay ah getter and setter are initialized after creating the property of the order of initializing getter and setter here can also be interchanged okay uh, let me try that actually i should have not uh, written can be interchanged but uh, i wrote it in a different way i think oh sorry uh, let me not edit anything copy paste so let us comment this now i am doing a setter and then getter okay this is what you wanted to say now now yes let me explain why it is so we can interchange it here there is no issue whereas you cannot interchange these two okay you cannot interchange these two i will uh, i tried it maybe i can uh, ask you to do that if you interchange these two will have a problem okay you need to have this first um, setter first before getter okay whereas here you can do it because you are setting these methods specifically okay and that too you are doing it one after the other or suppose if i don't do one of this then you will have a problem okay if i don't do getter at all only setter if i have and down the line i am trying to set it uh, sorry trying to get it i will have a problem okay unreadable attribute because getter is not there okay uh, i'll tell you where exactly the problem came 224 224 is this i am trying to get the value okay getter i have not set it so this is giving error but setter has been set it so it has set the value so here you can interchange the order of initializing the getter and setter here can also be interchanged why did i make the statement because you are specifically setting them because i told you that these are all the two internal uh, attributes which is holding the values of those function objects so you can set them individually okay there is no issue okay the, that's why it allows you to do that uh, whereas here when you are defining the um, using those decorators you have to do it in the same order you can you, if you interchange it you will have a problem okay so let me uh, you want me to try that or you can do it uh, i tried it okay you can also try doing this interchanging them and then analyzing it what happens you will have issues because what will happen i'll tell you if you don't do this first and then you try to do it below this okay let me try that uh, i hope i will come back i will come back to the thing properly it gives an error temperature is not defined because it depends on this definition oh sorry property i don't think it's a problem with the gap see what happened if i interchange them getter and setter i interchange them i have not even created this temperature property object before calling it setup i am trying to set the attribute of the property object before even creating the property object in the first place so interchanging this will not be allowed okay i hope you understand the difference okay uh, let me put it back before i make the code nasty okay so let me okay it is okay now this ordering is not allowed whereas this is allowed interchanging them because you are making sure that you have created the object prop property object is created and then you are setting this one by one and then you are also returning that object and here so let me tell you if i don't do this what happens okay you have a problem okay if i don't do this you will have a problem okay set attribute is not there okay this setter is gone why because this prop object whatever setter you did is gone because you are not taken that object with that value initialized before getting it so 
now what is happening is this prop is same as this prop and then it is getting it here so it is same as this and this okay the in between guy is gone because it is returning something which is to be copied for you to access it so uh, this always this method is returning the newly created object every time it is creating a new object and passing it back and then you have to use it for getting okay you cannot do away with this in, uh, assignment and then using it okay none of this is uh, you know you cannot leave out this uh, assignment okay that you have to be careful otherwise you are not going to use it anyway you are going to write your code like this this we are doing actually a, a post mortem of this and then trying to understand it so um, i hope this is clear to you okay yeah uh, where you are saying uh, i am getting error i'll tell you okay where in this prop here No, no, no. Here it no, is no problem. That's what I'm explaining you. Here you are saying, here you'll have a problem, right? You under, you accept, agree, right? Okay. I here also I am not I am not saying that there is a problem. The order of initializing getter and setter here can also be interchanged. Only I'm saying no issues. Okay, no problem. I hope I am not confused. Oh, oh, okay. Wait a minute. Did I make any wrong statement? Let me correct it. Uh, where you are saying here? No. Two on two. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, please come again here. Okay, uh, now suppose, okay, oh. ah, getter will not be affected, but setter is not set. Do you agree? Okay, let me, yeah, let me try it. See, set attribute is a problem, okay, but getter goes through. Getter, getter goes through, but setter doesn't, okay, set attribute can't. You cannot do this. Do you understand? Okay. Yeah, that's what I was saying. But you, if you do this, all of them are taken care because the the object which is getting returned, the property object, is already having the setter set, and then you are doing it here. So if you uh, if you don't do this, you are using you are lost that object which has which has got set. Okay. And then you are only setting the getter object, so set is having a problem. You try it out yourself, okay? This you always have to take the return value and then use it for setting the values, okay? That's what I was saying. Otherwise, uh, this order can be different, okay? This uh, you can interchange them, setter and getter need not be in the same order because you are only setting each of those methods individually, that's all, okay? If that, and you are making sure that the object which is returned are again used here. So you finally what you have this prop is the new object property object which is already having both the getter and setter set with those function objects. So you can use it anywhere you want. Okay, that's what I was telling you. Right? Okay, thank you. Uh, I didn't know who was that. Uh, who was talking actually? Ah, Janesh, okay, okay. Okay, now let me, what is the time? Okay, uh, maximum another 15 minutes is okay. We can drop off. Is it okay for you, for you guys? Uh, instead of taking a break and then coming back once for all, we can say bye-bye, okay? I hope so. You are fine. Okay. I have not too many things to explain. Uh, I think uh, we are now almost through. We will just... Uh, this is done so let me do one thing um, try to i will just run it and then explain you for 
saving time is uh, nothing new from what we learned um, so let me run it uh, and then we will just see what is happening here and then we will all close it okay inside in it okay fine now i am actually basically uh, taking some code from the function uh, sorry uh, book reference to book uh, which is also a good actually explaining this concept but actually they, they have spent only hardly two pages explaining it so i was not actually understanding that pretty well what is happening inter underneath that's why i i did all whatever i explained to you okay this is very simple now creating a duck object in it initialize this and then i am calling set name get name two functions and then property okay um, I am not using the underscore underscore here as per the um, book is it has given a hidden name which is really not a hidden name it's only name is hidden you can see that there is no underscore or double underscore so it will be visible and it can be accessible um, only thing is we are using property okay and then we are using get name and set name and so the name has this particular variable has now uh, two like what all of us have some um nickname at home and then uh, official name somewhere and uh, close friends call us in a different name which is not even uh, can be told in public so we have different names so similarly this particular uh, attribute has uh, two names now you can access it using hidden name also and you can access it using name also because of this property which is getting associated with this get name and set name um so the same thing is getting initialized you can use it in different way so we are creating the uh, object and then accessing it using name okay and let me i don't know whether let me access it using the hidden name also okay so d1 where is it so inside getter setter all that is there now d1 dot name is also giving me d1 and this hidden name is also giving d1 so we have a two names for the same variable uh, by using this property that's what i was trying to tell you now when i am trying to say assign a value using the name setter is getting called okay internally that we already uh, found out now okay now can you reason out why the inside the getter is getting printed oh okay now ah, i wanted to ask you this question okay some of you can explain me uh, where is it now okay when i printed it okay let me uh, I, you know i am getting confused so let me introduce some empty line so that what we see here is clear okay now can you reason or why inside the getter is getting printed first uh isn't it very obvious or is it uh, very clear right getting the set getting inside the getter is getting printed because as soon as you give a name it is going to associate with the set name sorry get name it's going to call that function and then inside the getter is going to be called uh, now access the hidden name directly okay that uh, already has, i think there is nothing uh, i don't think anything surprising happening but uh, in case if you guys i don't know why did i print it okay it's fine um, that is fine okay i don't think any confusion is there now i don't have anything else to explain 
okay directly accessing the class name is already explained it okay only this i wanted to explain before i close the class okay now what is happening here property we are changing the now so far the name and then hidden name was one to one correspondence we were associating the property name with the actual internal attribute that we were having but actually we can also do a computed value also can be called called as a attribute okay here diameter is called as an attribute property okay then you are associating this as an attribute but it is not a anything to do with the actual attribute that you have is something computed using that okay the diameter is a computed value derived value from the uh, existing attribute that you have so in that case what is happening this property is delinked from initializing that attribute is not meant for the initialization purpose but you are calling a new attribute which is a derived value of the uh, existing attribute okay so you can access it as a c1 diameter directly and you get the computed value from the radius so that's what i wanted to uh, explain you you can also use it for different purposes uh, where you can have a computed value and then you are calling it as an attribute property so once you have this property here what has happened is we don't we have not set the getter and setter for it so if we try to do it it will give an error because diameter cannot be directly accessed but not getter and setter sorry uh, i have not created a setter but getter i have already created okay this is this getter has been created but setter is not there so maybe i will give a uh, that's what i have done it here okay um, if i try to get this setter diameter is not there okay setter attribute has not been there okay that that's the same error like what i showed you earlier so in the computed value also we have not set the setter for it but getter only because if you do that suppose you know if i do getter for it then you have to make sure that you also update the radius accordingly okay so actually i will tell you uh, um, if you do that getter and setter for it diameter what will you do okay implement it so now i am also explaining it we can change the radius and diameter property get changed okay now what is happening is um, this i am explaining it suppose if you are changing the radius and then the diameter if you are calling it will get modified because it is going to call the radius inside which is already modified i am accessing it directly no setter for the radius so that is what i was using it here let me remove this error okay um, okay what i am trying to explain here is this error is gone okay do, don't worry about this error okay i told you that we have not really initialized the setter method here only we have created a property with the getter method so you are you are only can get the value of diameter uh, and you are using it derived from the previous attribute that you already have now what if if i change the value of radius directly okay i can use it because this attribute is having no setter data so i can access it directly and uh, of course you will know that the diameter gets changed because it is using internally that uh, radius value now for the five value of five it will be computing the diameter value okay so that is very new diameter new diameter is uh, 10 uh, because twice the value of 5 okay uh, because uh, you are changing the diameter uh, radius here <coughs> radius here okay it was earlier 8 now i change the radius to 5 okay then diameter is changing okay that is very obvious now what if if i want to create the method uh, sorry uh, property diameter which is linked with the radius okay just thought if I, if I want to do that make sure that the radius value is also appropriately changed when I change the uh, diameter attribute now if I am doing a setter method okay you need to remember that if this class circle class needs to be consistent it should have both the attributes the radius attribute as well as the diameter attribute are matching each other okay otherwise you will have a problem okay your implementation will have an issue now how do i do it so it is very simple if you are defining a setter attribute for a derived attribute which is a diameter some 
user may say that I want to set it to some value, diameter value. Then what you do, you use it using the, now you are using it, now value you are getting it, you are having a hidden name, okay, I am defining a hidden name now because I want to keep that diameter value internally, somewhere you have to capture it and then I am changing the radius to that, okay. So once I update the radius according to the new diameter which I have been set, then they are consistent. Then if, if I am doing it using the diameter again, I will get the consistent value back. Okay, that's what I was trying to tell you. Um, I can now create the circle with the two diameter and the radius and diameter are two and four. And then I do it, I change the radius to three and then my values of radius and diameter are consistent. But if I change the diameter value to 10, my diameter is getting updated. So 5 and 10 are getting created. So this implementation will be consistent across if you have uh, by, by chance if you are interested in changing or using the property for a computed value, you need to be consistent across uh, if there is a relationship between other attributes which is inside. Okay, the, uh, just wanted to highlight that. So I will share this implementation as well as this. Okay, this is not needed. Uh, already done it. So these two I will uh, Maybe I'll change it to class so that it was done in class. Class one and class two, I'll do it. Okay. So I think I have come to an end of this class.